So we'll start with the one that we just need to get it out of the way. Uh, sneaky Miasma. Wow. Self-control. I didn't happen. You, Christopher. I'm proud of you. Look at you. Finally not interrupting us. Yeah, well. Sneaky Miasma. There, there it is. is. All right. Thank you. We brought his yeah. touch back. And what's going to happen, he's going to cut all that out. So you yeah. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. One cut to you saying Sneaky Miasma. Sneaky Miasma. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Welcome to Empty Wallets. My name is Gabe, and this is Philip, and we're going to be doing our next Army Spotlight on Crew Boys. And Philip here Me. is our resident Crew Boys expert. Expert is a strong word. I like the word player. Expert. I like player. I, mean, I think we should tag him as our expert. Over all of Cruel Boys forever and always. Nope, I do not play them well. Or I think you play them great because I win. <laughs> What's the last time you played against them? The it's Fire been, Slayers Battle Report a year uh, ago? No, we played a. <laughs> we played. I don't know. I don't remember. What it doesn't matter. Last. It's all right. I think it's I've fine. watched you play other people. Yeah. And so yeah. I felt like I won. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you weren't here the last game I won. I beat Chris yesterday. That's true. You smoked me. I did. It was. Yeah. Was it yesterday? No, no, two days ago. That was still. with your slaves. No, that was, that was Cruel Boys. It was Cruel Boys. Yeah, I beat him with Cruel Boys. Oh my gosh, what a great time to do this. That was great. I know, I'm, I'm all warmed up, ready to go. Myself. Cool. I'm well, more one because Chris was bad than than me playing Cruel Boys good. But <laughs> you know, we will let that slide. <laughs> cool. All right, well, let's get into it. Yeah. So, tell me about El Cruel Boys. El Cruel, <laughs> El Cruel Boyos. Yes, and and to, to make a note here, right, Cruel yep. Boys... Is a don't, sub faction. Yes, they don't have their Auric War Clans. Yes, is the army. Is the army but, that I specifically play. Right, the it, Cruel Boys, and they all have separate enough rules where I feel like they're individual armies. But yes, but I feel like orcs. they're very split. Yes, um, almost almost the same way that Corn is demons versus yeah demons or mortals. Yeah, um, this I think is even more, this is even more so split. Yeah, I think. especially because Cruel Boys was a. Big thing that came out. Crow Boys was a AOS a new 3. army that was when three right. came out. When Everyone thought out. they'd get their own book because of how yeah. much they were. Yeah, so they were separate. supposed to be so different from the orcs. Right, and like, they are. I mean, they are, yeah. I don't think I see anybody play mixtures no. of them together. Not all. really. No, I mean there you are can. some big WA players that are yeah. doing okay, but now now with all the points drops and stuff, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But Crow Boys are actually playing pretty well lately, which has not been the case since their release. <laughs> this is the first time yeah. I've seen them Jeez. even be semi viable. Right, because they've been. Bad. Bad, like oh, thirty percent. Still fun to play, but yeah, sitting yeah. at like yeah, sitting in the, like the thirty-eight percent win percentage, <sighs> like in terms of like tournament, tournament play. But Ugh. again, we have to say it every video. We don't play tournaments. We yeah. we play for fun, and yes. this is by no means a competitive meta yes. analysis right. of Cruel and, Boys. And this at is... the time of recording, <laughs> the time of recording, they're Cruel doing Boys okay. Had just gotten a point bump or point point decrease. drop. Everything dropped. So yeah, again, a bump in being yes. better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so. Tell me about Cruel Boys. Cruel Boys. Uh, like, like we said, when 3.0 came out, they were the new orc faction that came yep. out. Their whole thing is that they are... If you don't know about Cruel Boys, you're living under a rock. Yeah. We'll you, just say that. Yeah. <laughs> the their their whole thing is they're supposed to be more strategic and more like thoughtful and planning when they're doing yeah. their battles as opposed to like the standard you think of an orc where they're just like, right. ah! Like going to, they're still like that, yeah. this, but they are supposed to play more, more tactical. Yeah. And they have more ranged, which is kind of like... A, like a huge part right. of their damage is their range, their their shooting. Yeah. Um, which is really funny in the way that like the shooting is built into. It's not just the shooting units; it's how the heroes and the shooting units and like the battle line units all work together. And we'll get into like play style and stuff, but they play very Death Star, like very just castle. just very castle Death Star kind of like if you break through the glass cannon, like they fall apart instantly. But like if you can't break that like castle or that Death Star, like like Chris learned the other day, like they just kind of like they'll just systematically destroy every unit you have mm -hmm. on the table, and so that has been harder to do um, until recently, just because with points, like they have it, they had, and I still think they are overpriced battle line, main battle line unit. Um, they're they're good, they're fine. I think they for having a five up save, they're a little overpriced, but they're they're in a better place now. They have really strong shooting units that you kind of just sit behind those battle line and those screens. And they have a couple of wizard heroes that just buff the crap out of it. Like they have their heroes buff everybody around them. Like very st very stereotypical like orc play is like the heroes buff everybody else. I feel like it's really strong in Cruel Boys, and and just how they buff. It's it's bananas what you can right. kind of. So like. it really plays into that whole castle idea of you yep. want to keep things close, keep everything close, keep everything in the auras, right. and just kind of like pick a target, kill it, and then move on. 
Nice. Like, at least that's how I play them. Yeah. I mean, I feel like yeah. that's what we see a lot of people playing yeah. them anyways. Yeah. Right. Super fun. Shooting is very strong in Age of Sigmar. Hey, in Age of Sigmar, shooting is very strong. Because it's a very melee. Very melee-focused focused. game. And this army, more than most, fishes for mortals. Like, it's no one's business. Yes. And they have buffs to mortals. Like, so they, ha- like, and we can, I don't know when you want to start it, but we can kind of start to get into what makes them unique and what makes them. Yeah, tell me about, tell me about the overall, <clears throat> I guess not the whole faction, but the. Sub- cruel boys. So the cruel boys, yeah. like, abilities. What do cruel boys get as, so, when you take cruel boys, is it the, what the army receives? Yeah, cruel boys, they have two big things that are unique to them. Uh, at least two things that I would say. Like, the, the first thing being their dirty tricks. So at the beginning those of dirty, those dirty, dirty, dirty tricks. tricks. They're so dirty. They're so dirty. Yeah. Uh, they're weird. I don't like them. I mean, I like them, but they're, they're fun. Sometimes they're so inconsequential, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, they're fun. They're fun. They're cool. Um, but they're it's, all right. When the army first came out, you get one of them. So this is after command point. Let me read this, make sure. Yeah, after players have received their starting command points. So after, like, basically the turns have been determined, both players have gotten their, you know, going first command points, going second command points. On the very first battle round, I get to do dirty tricks. And there's a list of them. They all do different things. One of them's like, uh, you know, if you're in cover outside of, if you're in cover, you're not visible. Um, one is lethal, like lethal traps or like, what is it? Lethal surprise. And so you roll three dice on a four up, you get to pick however many, for every four up, you get to pick one objective or terrain feature and the first time an enemy unit finishes a move within an inch of that thing they take d6 mortal wounds on a two up they take d6 mortal wounds which is weird because you've got to roll a four and then a two i don't know why you have to double roll to get this thing you already rolled for it and then you got to roll for it again which is weird but yeah and that's a lot of it and then there's my favorite one is the (laughs) disappearing act where you same thing you start you roll three dice for every four up you get to pick a unit enemy unit that's been deployed because everyone deployed already um, and then you take its wound characteristic, you roll a die if you beat its wound characteristics, or maybe it's double. Um, reg- regardless, whatever the rule specifically is, um, that, that unit is removed from the table and cannot be redeployed until the end of that you know, that enemy's first movement phase, and they can't move that turn either. So, and they have to be in their territory. So you're like just basically negating a whole... like Whole movement. Yeah, whole movement. And so you, when you have these... Armies that run swarm like I've done it to Christopher when he's played like <laughs> he played he played a game one time where he brought like three units of like forty grots or something stupid yeah. like something really dumb and I got all fours on all of it and rolled it and so he had to, he spent you know like twenty oh minutes putting down one hundred twenty one hundred twenty do that no he didn't take like, he didn't take them off but like just the I, fact that he a, had to like if I was a cruel boy <laughs> player and that happened I'd be like dude don't even do it just no I didn't make him take them off but just the idea that he had to like. They just had to not move for the, <laughs> for the yeah. like the whole first turn. Dude. They're just in like these massive mobs just in the way of, and it was it was very funny. I would have been so <laughs> frustrated to have set up 120 grots just to take them off, <laughs> to take them off and, and then, then put, put them, them back, back down. Dude, the so funny, so dumb. Yes, yeah. So <clears throat> that one's really funny. It can be really helpful, like if it, when you have those big screen units and things like that. So the, yeah, so the dirty tricks they happen at the beginning after command points. When the game for when they first came out, they had one, and now they have they get to do two of them, because that was like a way they were trying to buff right. them. They're like, oh, we'll give you two dirty tricks. And like these are like you got a double roll for them. They're okay. They last outside of lethal like surprise. None of them last outside of. They're the, not a game changer. No. The only one that's kind like that I take now I do every time because I get two of them is um, noisy racket, which lets all incoming. The, basically, the enemy has minus one to wound. For the whole first battle round, right. for all attacks. So like that's really good if you think you're gonna get, especially if you think they're gonna get engaged in the first first turn or first battle round. Yeah, like that just helps with your survivability because that is a problem that I find that the cruel boys have is survivability because they're orcs. They're not supposed to survive. Yeah. So, um, and then the other big thing that makes cruel boys distinct from the other orcs is venom encrusted weapons. So venom encrusted yes. <laughs> gets venom, everybody, everybody's encrusted, favorite thing. Yeah, they're the worst. They're the worst. It's they're the best. It's what For makes you. them even semi viable, yeah. in my opinion. Like it's the whole thing. You build every list around how many dice can I roll to get sixes. So the way it works is, um, if they have the auric, cruel boys auric, keyword. So there are some like hobgrots don't get it. Like so they have. So there are some units that don't have it because they're not auric. Yeah, cruel boys. And what it is is on any attack roll or any hit roll if you get a six you automatically deal the 
damage characteristic as mortal wounds, and that attack sequence ends. So I don't Dang. roll a wound roll. You don't get to roll a save roll. It's just automatically mortal yeah. wounds for that. But the attack sequence ends for that. For that specific, specific die, dice. yeah. So like for every six you roll, it just does the damage right away as mortal wounds, and you pull it aside. Everything else that made the hit roll but wasn't a six, you roll through like normal. Yeah. And obviously anything you missed, you missed. Um, where that gets really fun is when you pair it with some of the wizards who can give um, either a venom po like give them venom or give them a potion. Right. Like so you give them the venom and that means they're hitting that on fives and sixes, which gets really Jeez. scary. So for how long? Until my next hero phase. Jeez. <laughs> so it's like a spell. Like it right. used to be in lieu of a spell, and then they had to change it where they get to do that and get to do a spell now. Dang. Yeah. Uh, so they've slowly been buffing That's this crazy. army over time. Um, and then you have like some heroes that, well, one hero specifically, the Sludge Raker Beast, uh, the Kill a Boss on Sludge Raker Beast. No, Break a Boss on Sludge Raker Beast. Whatever. It doesn't matter. You know, he's not, he's in the bin. But what he does is he has an aura of 12 inches. Every unit wholly within 12 inches of that aura. On the sixes, not the fives, but the sixes, you add an additional mortal wound to any six that you roll. So if you rolled, like, so this is where it gets fun with the shooting guys, is you roll, they roll two attacks each, you roll two, or there's a unit of three, so you roll nine attacks. No, math is hard, seven, because plus one for your commander. You get three sixes. Those do two damage each normally. If they're within 12 inches of that Sludge Raker Beast, they then do three damage each. So that's nine mortal Dang. wounds. And then you roll through all the other stuff it would normally do. You That's know, if crazy. it gets through, it does two yeah. two damage normally, anyways. So you were the so venom and crystal weapons are just really really fun. It just you can buff them and you can buff them. Yeah, it's it's really the army is built around yeah. venom encrusted. Like nice. everything everything kind of revolves around rolling as many dice as you can to fish for that venom encrusted hit because then you're not yeah they're not you're not rolling a wound roll they're not rolling a save roll and if they don't have a ward you're just doing right. free damage. So let's go back to uh, dirty tricks again really quick. Yeah. Is there any dirty trick that you're like, this is just bad? Do not take. Oh. Um, Do not take dirty trick. Covered in mud is kind of hard. Uh, depends on how people build the tables. Yeah. I, at least in Age of Sigmar and the games that we play and play, games I play with other people. Uh, so covered in mud is like you roll three dice for every four up, you pick one unit, and that unit, while they're in cover... Uh, is not visible to enemy units, but you can't pick pick heroes or monsters. So you have to. So like, you have to put. You have to like they're already in cover. That's it's, weird. It's, that's a weird. It's one. weird. Yeah. It's definitely very situational. But it's very situational. I can't. Again, I don't have to pick this until the first command points are given. So I'll, depending on how the board is built, I can be like, wow, this person. Yeah. You know, let's say I got or attacker. To see what they are. What? Like, yeah. If they're a heavy shooting army. Heavy shooting. I want to play cover more. So it's yeah. like it's doable. Something that you might want to take against like Lumineth, yeah, but not really, yeah, anything else, yeah. So it's yeah. it's okay. you can't, but I mean, it makes you non visible. So if yeah. you have uh, even against another spell casting army, so if you have an army because it's a lot of spells are within range and visible, yeah. So especially like Zinch, like there's a lot of things, yeah. That yeah. So Cruel Boys is a sub faction inside of. A, there's sub factions inside of that sub faction too. Okay, I was gonna ask you. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so you <laughs> mentioned why Cruel it's a Boys are a sub faction, but yep. they also have their own sub faction. So it's yeah. very interesting to me that they just didn't get their own book. Well, none of all of the orcs are that way. That's why I'm saying like the orc, okay. the orc orcs war clans kind of weird in that way where it's like okay, they're all orcs and they all technically can be taken in one army like a big okay. wall sub faction, which then has its own like other other rules. stuff and yeah. rules and things like that. So Cruel Boys has. They okay. are a sub faction. They are technically their own army. They just fall under orc war clans. Right. So they do get their own sub faction. So they're a sub faction okay. of orc war clans, and they themselves have sub factions. Okay. So tell me about which sub faction you normally go with, and then which sub faction you're like, stay away from that one. Okay. There are two right now that are good. Okay. Um, one of them is this is why Covered in Mud, I think, is bad. Not bad, but like negated yeah. now. Uh, Grinning Blades. So Grinning Blades used to. If you were outside for the first battle round, you were not visible outside of twelve inches. Like every unit in the like yeah. every Cruel Boys unit was not visible outside of twelve inches for the first battle round. Which was like kind of good. Like it was okay because it was like, okay, like if I see a Lumineth across the table, they have to get within twelve inches before yeah. they can even attempt to shoot at me. Which is nice, but it only lasted the first battle round. How often are like like yeah, the, the maybe turn two you're getting into combat unless you're playing a really charge heavy army. Right. Like, you're not really getting super close in the first battle round in yeah. AOS. So it kind of was, like, useless. 
Now they've changed it. It is the whole game. If you take Grinning Blades, Dang. every Cruel Boys unit is not visible outside so of 12 yeah, inches. Then, uh, so the covered in mud dirty doesn't... trick is like, I, that one's even, it's more conditional. I have to be in cover first, and then I'm yeah. not visible. But that's not visible at any range outside of melee range, which is nice. Yeah. Um, so Grinning Blades, like, used to be kind of like a, you don't really ever take it to like, it's one of the main ones that I take now. Just because I'm playing a death ball, like Death Star, I want to... I want to have to force them to come to me because then I can just shoot at whoever I want. Right. Um, and then their wizards have to put themselves in danger if they want to get in spellcasting range, yep. things like that. Uh, the other good one is Big Yellers. Big Yellers is the shooting-friendly one. So what it does is it makes uh, the Bolt Boys, which we haven't gotten into those yet, but makes them battle line, which means you can double reinforce them instead of single right. reinforce them. And it also adds three inches to all shooting attacks in the army. So just buffs um, all your shooting. Buffs all the shooting, and in the first battle round, you can re-roll one of the missed die for every shooting attack. Dang. So like one unit rolls all their die, you can re-roll one, one of those missed with die. A lot of shooting with a lot of shooting in mind. Yeah. Yes. Cool. And so, any sub factions that you're like, don't even worry about this one. Skull bugs. Okay. Um, that one is like every time at the start of the combat phase, if there's an enemy unit within three inches, you roll a die and on a six up, they have a minus one to hit. It's like so. Yeah. You have to remember to do it every time, like at the start of every combat phase. You're like, okay, he's he's within three inches. He's within three inches. Let me roll one die for each guy within three inches, and hopefully, one of those is a six, and that one specific one that you rolled yeah, the six for. It for. To be sixes, that's tough. It, yeah, it's just like ugh, it's just. You not, can just not roll it at all. I always forget. You know, I just forget to roll them half the time. Yep. So it's like I might as well not have taken a sub action, like because that's their big benefit. So. Yep. I do not take skull bugs. I don't think anybody should take skull bugs just because of how strong the other two are. Yeah. Like I could see that being useful in some scenarios, but yeah, big yellows used to be the must take. And now I, I, again, like I said, with, with grinning blades being a full battle length now, it's, I think it's, it's yeah. argumentatively like actually viable as right. like something that is good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So does, Cruel Boys have any faction terrain or endless spells? You said they have wizards, so yes. assuming it's a wizard army, not a priest army. Mm -hmm. um, there are no priests. You said you had that. Well, they have potions. Yes. So that's another. That's a whole other. It's a whole other thing, thing yeah. that you can get with it. Uh, yeah. But do you have any faction terrain or endless spells? No faction terrain. No endless spells. None of it. Nope. Okay. So that's just something that you just won't have as work. Yeah. As I mean, you can still use universal on the spells. Yeah. There, I think there are some endless spells in the rest of the orc. Um, okay. Actually, I don't even know if there are endless spells in the orc thing. I, don't think so. I literally don't think there are any in the orc. Yeah, there's none. Yeah, not yeah. even any faction train for no. them either. No faction train yeah. for orcs. No. Interesting. That's just they just don't. Probably um, some sort of lore behind that. I'm sure it is. It's just them going from place to place, not really having a. Yeah, very wandery, very nomadic. Yeah, just whatever. Cool. Yeah. So. Um, well, we can jump right past that one, huh? Yeah, yeah. No faction train. Uh, we can okay. talk about spells and stuff though. Well, tell or, tell me about command traits. So you're picking your general. <laughs> And you've got to pick a command command trait. Command trait. What um, are, what are you picking? There are three command traits. That's it. Three. Yes. One, two, three. There are one, two, three. There is slippery scumbag. Okay. Which is like you can retreat and charge. Okay. So that general can retreat and charge. Lame. Cool. Like yeah. Yeah. So there, are, <laughs> there is there is there are some units that benefit from charging. For sure. There's very few, and they typically don't take them as general. Uh, yeah. well, especially if you're building a uh, castle, you're not going to be wanting to retreat then charge, right? Yeah, like unless you're just trying to get like it's again, yeah. yeah. I've ne I don't think I've ever taken that one for zero sure. zero percent okay. times. Um, then there is super sneaky. Which you have taken. Stupa I take sneaky. that one a lot <laughs> because just because just because you like the name. No, no, no. That's sneaky my asthma. And it makes this guy. It makes him laugh. Every. <laughs> Okay. There it is. That's there's just that's canonical at this point. Like, yeah. <laughs> just go back and watch our Cruel Boys versus Fire Slayer thing, and you're gonna hear that about forty hundred times. Yeah. Um, from behind camera. <laughs> but from behind camera, yeah, he's not even in the video. Every time you say it, it's gotta happen. I know. Yeah. Um, yeah okay. Super sneaky. Super sneaky. So at, after deployment is finished, well, let me read it. Actually, the generals on the battlefield at the start of the first battle round. We don't have any reserve shenanigans, so okay. literally he's always going to be on the battlefield, but whatever. Um, I can pick one friendly Cruel Boys unit and set them anywhere on the battlefield outside of nine inches from an enemy. 
It's really good. It's, it's teleporting them. It's yeah, you get a free at the beginning of the game, free teleport. Yeah. I, you know, and it's at the start of the first battle round. So that's after command like after people have figured out we already know turns and everything like that. Yeah. Um so you can set up like if you had a bad deployment, you can reset something up. Or if you're like, oh, I get to be, play more offensively, or I want to like put some pressure on him somewhere, like you can throw something behind him, or yeah. like just hey, I'm gonna put this screen. Mar farther forward to block this lane right here or have him forced to like go into that screen yeah so it's got a lot of cool like just first round deployment but it is a one-time use at the start of the first battle round kind of command trait right and so which could be nice which could be nice yeah i like it i take it more often than not especially if you want to dive your general in a little bit more you don't lose yeah, well you don't have you don't have to move trait. the general you can move any cruel boys you don't know no, what i'm saying but yes, is yeah, yeah, yeah you wouldn't have to worry about your general dying later and losing a big command trait. I yeah. mean, you still... Yeah, you've already you know. used it. You've gotten full benefit of that command trait. Yeah. You're right. Um, the other one is Egomaniac, which I take for fun sometimes because yeah. I think it's dumb. Uh, if the general's within three inches of another friendly unit, I roll a dice before I allocate any wounds to the general. For every four up, I pick one other friendly unit within three inches and allocate that wound to them. So nice. he basically just like will pick up other orcs around him and be like, "You take the damage, yeah, and then just put <laughs> him back. The <laughs> you die." Like, it's yeah, just, very. So he's an egomaniac. He's very yeah. self-centered, and so like That's funny. that can be really fun. I've taken that one a couple times when I take a more melee brawly general, because right. like if I'm like I need fighting, I need I need strong. them fighting because they're doing a lot of like they have good melee damage. Like I take a sledge or beast or like a, a break a boss on Meyer or Trogoth. Like, I want them in melee combat, but I don't want them to die because they're my general. So you just slap Ego yep. Maniac on them and keep a battle line unit nearby. And, like, 50% of the time, like, they're taking damage 50% right. less, yeah, basically. totally. So that one's fun. More general use. Like, very good survivability. But more often than not, I'm taking super sneaky yeah. to just get more field advantage. Yes. That's all. That's the only. That, those are the three command traits. That's nice. it. Those last two sound very fun. Last two are fun. I like the last two. I again, super sneaky. Super sneaky is fun because there's lots of weird sh movement shenanigans in Cruel Boys. Yeah, their whole thing is they're sneaky and tactical, and like so. There's artifacts and mount traits you can take that have more movement. There's spells that let you yeah. do movements. And so phase. let's talk about your artifacts, spells, and mount traits. All you have right. No prayers, but no talk prayers. about the enhancements that you have. Yeah. For your army. So tell um, me the things, the ones that you like. Tell me the ones <laughs> that you're like stay away. Uh, artifacts of power. I don't think I take Cruel Boy's Artifacts of Power ever. Really? I, you just I, take Universal? I'll take Universal. Okay, so let's just skip over. No, Cruel I mean, Boys there artifacts. are some that are good. They're, well, they're, they're, all, mean, they're all single use. That is my big problem with Cruel Boy's gotcha. Artifacts of Power. They're all at like once per battle, roll a die, and on a X up, you can do this ability. Right. Which is like, okay, cool. So I, it can be fun. But it can not be fun, really. but if I miss it. Then it's, it's gone. I've literally taken an artifact that has done nothing for me. Yeah. So it's like, okay, cool. You already have so much rolling happening for all your other stuff. Yeah. Like, There's some that you don't have to roll, but it's like the beast kill a slop is funny. I do like that one. I take that one. I that one I think they wrote specifically when 3.0 first came out and it was like monsters are the big thing. Yeah. And they're like, we bet this like it's like first like when you're in combat, you can roll a die and on a two through five. The enemy monster takes D3. Oh, it's like, no, it's D6 mortal wounds. And then if you roll a six, they take two D6. Dang. So, so it's take like damage. Yeah. So you just like. That happens once. Happens once. Yeah. Yeah. And if you roll a one, it does so nothing. <laughs> what artifact do you normally take then? Uh, I will either take Amulet of Destiny. Right. I will just ward. Just give him a six up ward. Yeah. Most of the time. That's pretty much it. And if. Like or there are some the seat, or whatever, whatever the current general's handbook has. If there's some, you know, the universal general's handbook yeah. ones for that season, like that the are, Griff Feather that was last yeah. season was. Super I think that nice. one's still active, but, but yeah, I don't know if it is anymore. Yeah. But it was like a five up. It was a five up board, so I was taking that one every single time because like right. I normally take Amulet. Why would I not take the five up board? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I'd very rarely take the Cruel Boys artifacts oh, solely because they're all one time use. Yeah, and, and you don't want to deal with that. And I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, just give me a generic something that lasts me the whole the whole game. So cool. And then all right. So spells. Spells. Their spell lore is actually pretty dang good. Okay. So we'll start with the one that we just need to get it out of the way. Uh, sneaky Miasma. Wow. Self-control. It didn't three, happen. Christopher. I'm proud of you. Look at you. Finally not interrupting us. Yeah, wow. Well, sneaky Miasma. <laughs> there it is. All right. Thank you. We brought his yeah. attention back. And what's going to happen, he's going to cut all that out. So you didn't, yeah. You yeah, yeah. One it, cut it, to you saying Sneaky, sneaky Miasma. miasma yeah. Sneaky yeah, 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 exactly. You're not going to hear all the other garbage in between. That's fine. It's whatever. He's in charge. Okay, tell me what Sneaky Miasma Sneaky does. Miasma. I Sneaky Miasma. Sneaky Miasma. It's, it's like the button. Yeah, what, yeah. What are those buttons? The yeah, yeah. 
I forgot. What was the button? I, what was the button? What was the button? Um, you know this. How about your mom? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was your mom. <laughs> what did right. it say? Yeah, nailed him. What was? Oh. What did the button say? That was easy. That was that easy. was easy. That's what it was. That's it was basically, that staples. basically the yeah. same thing. Was it staples or was it like AAA? No, it was staples. Okay. All right. Uh, has a casting value of six, so it's easy to get off. Range of sixteen. I pick one monster wholly within eighteen inches. <sighs> Dude. And that monster can make a normal move in the hero phase. So I cast a spell on a monster. Monster gets to move in the hero phase. The movement phase happens. They get to do their normal move again. Most of the monsters in Cruel Boys have pretty decent movement. Like either 14 or like 10. Because there's only like two monsters. <laughs> so Yeah. Um, well, three technically, but two of them are birds. Two of them are the same bird, but which version? <laughs> so, so that one's really fun. Uh, you pair it with something like Gobsprack, who's a, a double casting wizard. You have another, you know, you, you always have shaman. Spells, yeah. yeah, I'd have a shaman, um, cast Sneaky Miasma on the on Gobsprack. He moves 14 inches forward. He casts his two spell, and then the movement phase, he just gets to move back to safety. Because, mm. you know, so it's like that kind of shenanigans. Yeah. Or like when I was playing Chris the other day, it was like, hey, I need to get to his back line to pressure that wizard that he's got back there. Sneaky Miasma on Gobsprack, 14 inches forward. Movement phase happens, 14 more inches forward. I'm within three inches of that spellcaster that's been poking at me the whole game yeah so that one's really strong uh if you have monsters in the list right if you're not taking monsters normally you'll have if you're not taking a sludge raker beast in your list you're dumb so you'll always have a, you'll, you're literally <laughs> you're doing something wrong you're literally stupid you didn't read anything <laughs> <laughs> you, you just were like rolled dice to pick your units for some reason yeah. or you bought a box set and you don't have them i think he comes in the box Does he come i think in he the comes yeah he comes in the christmas you can't box not set get him yeah but no what about like the it didn't come in the Dominion box, though, right? No, it didn't come in yeah. the Dominion box. So, yes. Yeah, so you get you, a pass. Yeah, you get one pass. You have the Dominion pass. box and you If you paid more. the $32 that a Dominion box costs now, <laughs> yeah. you get, you get you a get pass. Because yeah. there's still 30,000 of them. Yeah. So, um, buy a Sludge Record Beast if you don't have one, please, for the love of all that is holy. Um, Great. Spell. We're still talking about spells. I'm sorry. Yeah, so, that's, a, Sneaky that's Miasma. the one that you always take. That is the one that I always take. Any other ones? Well, I don't always take Sneaky Miasma. It depends on, again. Mostly. But that is, a, that is a great spell. Typically, I have I have at least three wizards in, my, in most of my right. lists. So what are some other ones that you take? Uh, the other ones that I take is, the other one that I will always take is uh, Choking Mist. Okay. So Choking Mist is essentially, I pick one point within 24 inches, invisible, that spellcaster. Every unit within six inches of that point that I picked until my next hero phase has minus one attack characteristics and they cannot run. Wow. Yeah, super annoying. That's really Very annoying. annoying. You go up against, like I played, like I'm referencing the game I just most recently played, but I played Chris and he plays Nurgle. They all move really slow. Yeah. So them Can't run. not being able to they run in turn attacks. one. They have a lot of, Both, yeah. Like three attacks They're rolling because they're just trying to roll for their disease points yep. and stuff. Yeah. It's so just, it just reduces to two each and it's just, uh, yeah. Especially against an army that has, 10 models, two attacks each. It's like, oh, well, that's Oh, that's one attack each now. Yeah. yeah. And they can't run to get, you know, get anywhere. Get, yeah. yeah. Um, and the best part about that is it's every unit within six inches of the point I pick, not one unit. So if they've right. deployed their stuff all clumped together, I just pick the point, smack dab in the middle and of all sucks. of them, and those four units that he has all clumped together, minus one attack characters, that cannot run. That's Super fun. Yep. The next spell that... Every wizard, I think, is their just it is their war scroll spell is summon boggy mist. Okay, um, it affects the entire board. Okay, so it does not have a cast right. like a range. It's yep. just a casting value board of seven. Okay, um, my entire army or all cruel boys units basically get. I think it's the whole army. I'm gonna let's check. Oh no, I don't want to pull up war scroll right now. Um, they all get plus one to charge. Oh, nice. And the entire enemy team gets minus one to charge. <laughs> so <laughs> it is very good. Yeah. Because especially when you have someone who could teleport behind you and they got to make that nine inch charge. Now it's That's a 10 ten. inch charge. Now it's just that you much know? harder. Or they were yeah. like, okay, I'm, I can move. I've already, they can't run. Like, I guess there's not a lot of units that can run in yeah. charge, but still. Like, you got those guys, it's like, okay, I got to make a six inch charge. Now it's a seven. Or a yeah. seven inch charge, which is 50 50, is now an eight, which, so it's like, and that one just affects the whole board and lasts until my next hero yeah. phase. And so, and every wizard I have knows it, so I can kind of be really strategic on when I use it. Yeah. So that's cool. always fun. The other the other spells are okay. I like nasty hex, very situationally. I'll typically if I'm running a really heavy wizard, 
Yeah. Like lots of wizard. If I'm running like four, if I'm running three shaman and gobsprack, I'll bring nasty hex. That's the one that uh, negates ward rolls. So you can pick a unit you know, right. within 12 inches. So that's where Sneaky Miasma pairs well. Sneaky Miasma and Gobsprack, he knows Nasty Hex. He moves 14 inches forward, picks out hexes the picks, hexes the unit that you know needs to, and then gets back to safety. And then my shooters go and pick yep. off that guy that I've been he's been rolling, you know, warding yeah. for up wards all the game. Yeah. So that one's good. The black pit I don't really take. It's fine. Casting value seven. Roll a die for each model in that unit. It within that's within 12 inches. For each six, they take uh Wait, for each six and for each each other roll that is equal to or greater than their unit save characteristic, they suffer one mortal wound. Yeah. So it's a good horde breaker, really, you know, because you're rolling a die for every model right. in those units, and it's every you know, sixes are just really important in cruel boys, and then if they're a battle line unit, so that one's really good. I don't take it as often just because I end up finding myself needing sneaky miasma, needing choking mist. Right. I've already done summon boggy mist. Um. Again, the only time I really take Black Pit is if I'm running four different wizards and I have right. five casts that I need to get off. Yeah. So, but yeah, those are all the spells. Um, like I said, very versatile. Very, I really like the spell lore for this army. Yeah. Because it's pretty much there's just... A lot of cool it, it's either It's either buff me or not... Uh, there's that one damage one, but or it's just more of like a, no, you can't do yeah, that. Yeah. No. It's annoying. Make things harder very for you. Annoying, yeah. yeah. So That's I like that. A lot of choking. A lot of choking. A lot of choking and mists. Lots lot of, of mists. mists. There's like four miasmas. mists. Choking mist. A lot of sneaky, sneaky miasma, which is basically just a mist. Yeah, a lot of sneakies. Summon boggy mist. Lots of lots of sneakies. So tell me about grand strategies and battle tactics. The, the, that's the hot topic. <sighs> grand strategies All and the battle. grand strategies and battle tactics. Battle tactics are in- interesting. Well, okay. the, the, we're going we're gonna to turn to them. Give me, I, give me top battle tactic. Because I feel like that's the, yeah, I feel, Top. Like, um, I feel like that's the deal with battle taxes. They're not, they're all very situational. So, so this is, is, there, is there, let, let me rephrase the question yeah, yeah. then. Instead of going through each one, is there yeah. any one that you're like, you can get this one, do this one? <laughs> no. Okay. There is not one that is a guarantee. Like, yeah. the only one that I would say is close is take that, you suckers, uh, which is I need to deal 10 wounds to the enemy unit this turn and not receive 10 wounds. Gotcha. Which makes it hard. Which could be nice in a shooting in the beginning. Yes. That is the and only that, that is where I'm saying it's not a guarantee because if you're not running super heavy in the shooting or you're not in a good position shooting wise yep. or the enemy recognizes that you're shooting a strong and picked them all off, that gets really hard because otherwise you're in melee combat with everything and, and your you're gonna saves are five ups. Yeah. Like you're going to take 10 wounds in a combat phase. Yep. So that's the only one where I... I can get that one like every other game, but not necessarily every game. And what about grand strategies? Uh, the grand strategies are funny. This is where Oryx kind of fall into this funny place of they have four, five grand strategies, but two of them are locked behind the other sub factions. So you have to have this sub faction to take Got it. it. Same with the battle tactics. They have like five battle tactics. But, but they're very sub But, but they're yeah, like if you have an Iron Jaws unit like general, then you can do right. So it's like really weird. Um, I'll do crumple them all a lot because that one's just funny. Um, I, there has to be less than three enemy units on the on the board by the end of the game. Oh, nice. So it's like if I'm playing. Um, oh no, that's the wrong one. I'm sorry. Crumple them all if you have Kragnos, Gobsprack, or Godrak, which are like three of the named heroes for each sub faction. Um, I take Gobsprack a lot, yeah. So I take that one because, but that's it. And then the other one that you can take, this one's weird. You just have to have them. They just, just have to be, yeah. They just have to be in the army. Like if Gobsprack, Kragnos, or God Godsrack are in your army, you can take Crumple Mall. So that's another restriction of their grand got strategies. It. Like you got. What if, do you have to do to get the grand strategy? There has to be fewer than if there are fewer than three enemy units on the battlefield. Okay, so it is game. that one. It is that have, one, but you, you have, have yeah, to have it has another restriction on top yeah. of it. And then in and out lads is. I don't I've never taken it. Yeah, it's like you have to. When the battle ends, you complete the strategy. If the general has not been slain and fewer than half of the units in your starting army have been destroyed, yeah, it's orcs. Half of your units are. Yeah, just, unless the other yeah. person's just not engaging with you and letting you shoot them the whole game. Yep, you're prob- probably not yep. getting that one. Probably that one, it, not. Yeah, if that one was like an Iron Jaws or a Bone yep. Splitters, it's a lot more movement, grand strategy, and a lot more melee damage. Yeah, like. I could see that one being viable, but with Cruel Boys, I just don't. I don't yeah. think, I've tried it a couple of times. I've never, I've never work. successfully gotten that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe cool. that's just me playing bad, though. So yeah. let's go into the units. Units. What 
are some notable units, some of your favorites you like to take. We've already talked about Sludge Raker Beast. We talked about Sludge Raker Beast. It's an absolute must. We talked a little bit about Did I, uh, Killabo. I, or not. We talked a little bit about Killabos. Talked a little bit about... I haven't talked about Killabos. I haven't talked about Bolt Boys, really. We've talked a little bit about Bolt Boys in the beginning. A little bit. Um, but tell me, about, tell me about the units, the notable units that you're like, these are Yes. Great. So your, your synergies lie really heavily with your Shaman. Okay. The, the Shaman kind of enable your heavy hitting units to become really heavy hitting units. So like I said, the Shaman, they have their spells, which are great. Little buffs, little, little debuffs here and there. Their Venom elixirs, Venoms or elixirs are where they really shine. Yeah. So if there's a unit within three inches of them, they can give them either a Venom, which makes them hit their Venom and Crest weapons on fives and sixes, or they can give them an Elixir, which is a plus one to save. So you can give them a free all defense, basically. How many of these Shaman do you usually like to take? I take two minimum. Normally, I have three. Okay. Just yeah. just because. Two I'll absolute have, minimum. Two, take three. I wouldn't say abs- That's not true, actually, because I just played a game with Chris where I only had one. Okay. And Gobsprack. And I won. And I won. So it's like... But I definitely wasn't dealing as much damage as I wanted to because I was missing a lot of that Venom Encrusted on my shooting. Right. So I saw the trade-off of not having two or okay. three. Because typically what I'll do is I'll have two or three shooting units, typically only two, and I'll just a shaman follows that unit around everywhere. The, big thing, the biggest thing with the shaman is you get a spell and you get a potion. Yes. Potion slash used, Venom. Yeah, you used to get the Venom or the potion, uh, Elixir, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, you, you get a little, yeah. little pot of something you can give somebody. Um, that used to not be the case. The shaman used to either be able to do the venom or potion and, or, or a, spell. a spell. It was one or the both. other. Now they can do both. And Excellent. now, so that has made them more. They were already like a must take because that venom was just too yep. strong. Now they're now so. it's now it's like you don't feel bad taking them because you're not just bringing them as okay, honey. Here's the venom. T- right. you know, they're not just a unit that that just gives just out venom and does venom, nothing yeah. else. Like they actually can affect do the battlefield. Things, yeah. yeah. So I really okay. like, like I said, take two of those. Uh, the Shaman, the Bolt Boys. So yep. the way the Bolt Boys work. And so there's two, there's two. So when people look at Cool Boys, there's two shooting, two main looking shooting models. Yes. So Bolt Boys are the little guys with crossbows. Little guys with crossbows. Okay. And then there's the the Kill Bow, which, which is, is the, the big, big one, the big, yeah, okay. the big like ballista. Yeah. Bolt Boys. Uh, well, the the Kill Bow works in this way too, to an extent. Uh, but the Bolt Boys specifically, the way they work is if they have not moved that turn, they can make an aimed shot, okay. which is less attacks. So it's one attack each, yep. but it's like a two to hit, three to wound. Like, more easier to hit. Yep. Is it yep. more damage? And it's 24 inches of range. Okay. So if they haven't moved, they get 24 inches of range, one attack, twos to hit, threes, and it's one rend. Both of, both of these are one rend either way, uh, and then two damage each. Okay. And that's so, on both the ra- the both of the aimed, aimed and, and hasty. Regular. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... I like that you say regular because you know how frequently I don't use aimed shots. Yes. Yeah. So the more fun thing to do with the Bolt Boys is if they have moved or if yeah. they're within if they're in combat range, they're shooting at somebody who's within three inches, they have to do a hasty shot. A hasty shot is double the amount of attacks. So you have two attacks, yeah. but it's a four to hit, three to wound, one yeah. rend, two damage each. Going back to Venom Encrusted, yeah. you give them a potion or so it's the venom or sixes. fives or sixes you're rolling double the amount of dice you have double the amount of chance for mortal wounds to go through yeah you unless if unless moving them puts you in a disadvantage disadvantageous spot or like serves no purpose you always want them to move yep. they need to do a normal move and that's only if they do a n- normal move not a redeploy not a yep. like like anything weird like that if they've done a normal move so Yes, move them. It does give them 12 inches, but that's where I Big Yellers was so strong because it added three inches. So even if they right. moved, they had 15 in- they, Even now, they still do. But even if they've moved, they have 15 inches of range, which yeah. in Age of Sigmar is really good. Yeah. 24 inches is, in Age of Sigmar is like buck wild. You're like yeah, 24 it's one inches attack. of shooting range, but it's one attack. And that's where we get to the kill bow. The kill bow, for a long time, was overpriced. And yeah. I still think kind of think is. The only time you took them was against Gargans. Yeah. And that was if I knew I was playing against Gargans, because yeah. and like because we play casually and we're like, what list are you bringing? Oh, you bring Gargans? Okay, I'm gonna make sure I have kill bows and the yeah. you know, but you can't do that at tournament level, you know. Yeah. Um. So the kill bow kind of didn't see a lot. It was also 120 points when I think it first came out. Yeah. Now it's 80. So I've actually wow. started putting at least one in all of my lists again. So the way this one works is it is it is a hero sniper or a monster like killer. So it has the same thing where if it hasn't moved, it moves. It shoots. 24 inch range with one attack um if it moves it has half 
the distance, so 12, 12, but it does not get double the attacks. It still only has one attack. So okay. moving this one is very not good. You want you want to position this thing where it can just sit and watch an objective, watch lanes of movement. You know, give it a basically it's a fixed thing like a machine gun nest or yeah. something. Like you don't want it moving. You want it defending something. The only time you move it is if you're you can't even if you didn't move it, you couldn't shoot anything anyways. Yeah. So you're repositioning it to something. Um, this thing's a t like when it hits. So if it doesn't move, it's like a two over three. One, I think, it, yeah, it's one rend. So it does two damage and eight. And then you roll one die for every, whatever you're shooting at, whatever target's wound characteristic is. Uh, you roll one die, and then for every five up, it does an additional wound on top of those two free ones. Yeah. Uh, uh, to a maximum, it does max out at 12, right. um, which is pretty fair for how cheap they are now for 80 points. Yeah. When they were 120 points, I was like, this should not be. But against be. a Gargant, you're going to do 12 damage. Yes, against There's a Gargant, you're rolling 36, yeah. 36 dice. To, you only need 10 fives and 36 yeah. dice. Statistically, that you know, one in three, you need a one in three. Yeah. So, so you're going to get it. Yeah. So the kill balls were always a little too expensive for me. Um, they're downside still. And the only reason I'd say like I'm still sometimes not bringing them is it's one attack. Right. Even, even a two over three. You can roll a one. You could, roll, you could, you could roll, roll a one, or you could roll a two, and then a, a four, yep. or like a a two, yeah, whatever. Statistically, combining both rolls, it's a fifty percent chance of that attack going through. So mm -hmm. two up sounds really good, but then a three up is like combining those two. It's a fifty percent chance that they go all the way through, not including the statistics of the six yep. that Metam encrusted, because it's it is an orc cruel boy. So hitting the yep. six is really good with those because it just goes through as mortals. Yep. Um. So I have been taking. Uh, there was a list I played against Chris where I brought two. And he was terrified. It was really funny. Yeah. Um, especially when I played when I when he played Gargants, like we were saying before, when he played yep. Gargants, like that thing. Well, that's a terrifying because that's a, that's that a guaranteed twenty four wounds per yeah. <laughs> per if, you, if they go through. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. And that was the problem if they went through. Yeah. Like so that's why. I was, but now that they're eighty points, I'm like sometimes I find myself being like, oh, do I bring another unit of Hobgrots? Like, no, nah, yeah. I'll just throw we'll a throw, kill, throw we'll a kill bow in there. In there and, yeah. and, we're good to go. It's like, yeah. if he hits, it hits. If it doesn't, it, it, and honestly, I think a lot of it is the scare tactic of it. It's yeah. just a big bow, and they're like, do I want to move my monster and or hero anywhere near that? Yeah. They, within 24 inches of that. So even if it doesn't get the shot off, like it could just be a good deterrent, yeah. or at least make them second guess and make a mistake. Yeah. So are there any units that you're like, don't take this unit? Um, or ones that you're just like, uh, take them if you have to, but... I don't take the belt, the Merc Knob with Belch a Banner very much he's got a units within three inches of a five up spell ignore and units within three inches yeah. enemy units within three inches to start a combat phase on a two through five take one mortal wound and on a six take d three. like he's 70 points so he's like yeah. really cheap but he doesn't really a five up spell ignore when he has five wounds and like a four up set like just kind of yeah. like for 70 point you know I could drop him and for ten more points take a potential ten wound out or yeah. twelve wound output against big monsters. Like I don't take him a lot. He has his uses. Again, like if you get lucky with spell casting and things like that, you can yeah. ignore, ignore some of that. Uh never take the war cry uh yeah, war band that, or whatever is the underworld's war band. I feel like that's just standard. That's a standard yeah, like just, just, war, war cry they stuff. look really cool. I really like the models. It's like the cunning crew or something like that. I forget what their name is. His whole thing is like you can do an extra dirty trick. It's like, well, I already get two. I don't need. I don't need. A third. I don't need a third. Yeah. He was, it would have been nice before, but it might have been nice before. But even then, not. Yeah. For taking up the points and being a hero, that's just they don't do a lot in melee yeah. combat. They, you know, bah. the sludge wrecker beast though. That yeah. and gobsprack. Gobstrike, if you play him right, is really good. Mm -hmm. um, he does have a non-named version of himself, which is like a kill a boss on, uh, like, I forget, the Vulture. Yeah. You know, it's on the Vulture. It's the non-named version. He can be pretty good in melee. Okay in melee combat, but more of, like, a good support. Like, uh, there's anything that has kill boss in the name, they have uh, a ability on their war scroll called uh, All Part of the Plan, which basically means if a unit within three inches of them fails battle shock, they only lose one model. Mm. Which is really nice when you're playing with orcs that have five up saves and a yeah. bravery of five. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's like those are really good. So there's a foot hero kill boss that I'll take sometimes just okay. as a, you know, he's 80 points or something like that. Just yeah. kind of 
have him follow the battle line units around just just for that ability yeah. and nothing else. Um, and it can be good in melee combat too. But yeah, I wouldn't say there's a ton of army like units to avoid because there's not a ton of units. If you're just looking at Crowboy specific, if you're being a sub faction purist and you're not allying in any of the the other orc clans that you can like units because you technically have access to the whole yep. orc book. All and, we, yeah, and so you can. I don't. I you know. I like it. My favorite unit yeah. though is not a good. I mean, it's not a bad unit. It's not a good unit. It's just a fun unit. Is the break a boss on Meyer Lurk Trogoth, which is, which is I have him here because he's literally my favorite little guy. Yeah. Um, he's so stupid. Uh, so he's he's a hero, which is like great. But like his whole thing is melee combat. Get him into melee combat. At the start of the combat phase, you can say I'm gonna yank on his chain. Or like product yeah. or whatever I, I I call it yank on the chain. It's got a name on his war scroll. Uh, you deal D three damage to yourself. Okay. So like basically right. the, the little orc on the back like yanks on the Trogoth's yeah. chain. Does some damage to him. Does your damage to yourself for every damage? That, so you roll D three for every damage that you do yourself. You add two attacks to the Trogoth's clubs. Nice. Um, so it's kind of risky. It's risky. You're, you're hurting yourself. You hurt yourself. I've you out of spite killed myself too, just yeah. to like not let the other person get the satisfaction. I did right. it to you and I think, I our, think in, did, in yeah. our in our battle report. Yeah. Um, but that club is threes over threes, two rend, three damage each. Yeah. So, so he be. has four attacks normally. So if you do D three damage to yourself, you're doing ten attacks. Threes over, give him all out attack. Twos to hit. Threes to wound. Yeah. He does not have venom encrusted, so that is something I do need to say. Auric, uh, unless it specifically says on the war scroll. Um, mounts do not are not affected by uh, venom encrusted. So I, I meant to say that earlier. Um, some mounts do. Sludrecker Beast gets it because he's just it's nasty. It's on his war scroll. It's on his war scroll. It says specifically that these attacks are right included. And then the vulture. Yeah. On both Gobsprack and the kill vulture, yeah. they have it. Um, you'd think the Trogoth is a monster. It's not. Just like any other army, Trogoths aren't technically classified as monsters or yeah. behemoths. So okay, just big boys. I think I've listed literally like every unit in the. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess I didn't talk about the battle line, the gut rippers. Yeah. So you do take. You, you got to take them. Yeah. Unless you're taking big yellers. Um, they're the only battle line unit in the whole Crow Boys sub faction. Yeah. Like, they're it. They are. Originally, they were a supremely overpriced. They were 180 points, two wounds each, which is nice. So, unit of 10, you got 20 wounds, which was kind of, I think, why they were as priced as high they were. Yeah. And they have an ability. They had an ability that you had to roll for. You no longer have to roll for it. Enemies within one inch have minus one to hit, yeah. or within combat range. Basically, they can pick one unit they're in combat with, and that unit has minus one to hit when attacking them specifically. So that's good. Um, they were 180 points, and they have a five up save. So yeah, they just, not great. Not great. Um, they just didn't do a good enough job at staying. Like for comparison, Chaos Warriors are currently 200 points. With a you know in Slaves of Darkness we talked about this in our Slaves of Darkness video but they have two wounds each three up three three up save and a five up mortal wound ward for two hundred points yeah These and gut rippers gut rippers used to be two one hundred eighty points so twenty points less with a five up save and no more no ward yeah. at all it's so like yeah. they're they're a lot cheaper now they're one hundred twenty points now which makes yeah, them a little cheaper. more you don't know, like a lot of lists when the when they first came out cruel boys meaning. You pretty much just allied in Grotz because it was cheaper and they did as good at being yeah. screen units. And then in melee, they're whatever. They have two attacks yeah. each. But you can, paired with a Sludge Wrecker Beast, and they have two attacks each. You're rolling 20 attacks, 21 attacks with a unit commander. Um, you can fish for a lot of sixes. If they're within 12 inches of a Sludge Wrecker Beast, they're doing two damage per each six. So, like, they had a potential for really yeah. high. Uh, I still, I mean, like, I don't ally, I still don't ally in other stuff. So, right now, I typically run three units of Gut Rippas. Like I said at the beginning of the video, just Death Star the whole thing. Yeah. Just put the cruel boys out in front. Don't worry. Do not count on them to do anything other than die and get in the way of other stuff. So your shooting units that are buffed with venom and standing next to the Sled Drinker Beast can just issue out infinity mortal wounds to yeah. whoever wants to, you know, hard Still focus those, one target at a time. All those fives and sixes. All those fives and sixes, just infinity. Yeah. Five, remember, the it does say on the Sled Drinker Beast thing, um, his buff does not affect fives. Okay. So you don't get the plus one damage on fives and sixes if they got. It's only for the sixes. Okay. So that's yeah. the only thing you got to be wary of because otherwise that'd be way too powerful. Yeah. So are there any other things that this army has you want to make note of? If I'm playing the army or if I'm thinking about picking up the army. 
that um, we haven't talked about already? I feel like we've talked about everything. That, Like I said, their whole thing is kind of their venom encrusted. That is like yeah. the whole army is built around that. So go through if you're wanting to play them and look through the units you want to play and just remember your heroes. Don't. It's hard for me with the Sludge Raker Beast. I forget sometimes too. Um, he hits like a monster truck. Yeah. Like if he's rolling semi decently, he's getting you know between five and twelve wounds through yeah. on whatever he's fighting because all of his all of him is venom encrusted and he get benefits from his own plus one wound on venom encrusted. So like, but most armies I see run him as general. So I find myself being really scared. Like keep him in the middle to give the buff. It's a fine yeah. balance between making sure he's giving everybody the buff but also utilizing his thing. And then one other thing. That I totally forgot about till just now, because every orc, every orc, orc sub faction has one. They have a wall. Okay. So this is the cruel boys wall. When at the start of the combat phase, once there's a once per battle thing. Yeah. The start of the combat phase, when your general is picked to fight, uh, you can say you can declare. It's not at the start. It's when your general is selected to fight in the combat phase. Okay. You can activate your cruel boys wall once per game. Uh, he gets to fight. And he gets to pick two other units wholly within 18 inches, and they will fight back to back right after him. Oh, nice. So that's where I find that fine line of I would kind of forget to do that a lot because I play my Sledge Rigger Beast a little more passive. You said that's once per battle? Once per battle, yeah. It's a wall once per battle thing. Um, But I use it against Chris pretty strongly the other day where I got my general into combat to fight off one of his more heavy, heavy hitting things. But I had another, I had my Trogoth who was about to die. He had like two wounds left. He's about to die. Yeah. If I do my, you know, fight with my general first, if I fight with him first, he die, like he gets a, he gets to kill what he's fighting, but he's may or may not live. But the general's going to take some hits, and I didn't want yeah. to, so I fought with the general first, did the wall, killed the thing that I was fighting with, because like I said, the general can hit really hard. Yep. And then got to pick my trogoth to get his damage off and kill the unit that he was fighting too. So yep. both of them basically got to wipe something. So that That's strategic nice. wall is really nice. Um, or if you're just fishing for a bunch of damage. Yep. Um, Sometimes I'll do it with just two units of gut rippers where I'm just like, everybody's on one unit and we just want to make sure we're going to like try and kill this thing, like a gargant or something yep. like get as much damage as I can use the cruel boys wall and do that. So that nice. is the other thing that I forgot. Yeah. All orc armies have a wall of some kind. Yeah. So that's a pretty good wall. It's I like it. I think it's, there are other ones that are really good. This I only play the cruel boys. I don't play the other orcs. So I don't know what their walls are actually. Yeah. So I can't really say this one's my favorite. Of course it is. It's the only one I know. Because it's the cruel one. Yeah, my chocolate chip cookie is my favorite cookie, but it's the only one I've ever eaten. So, yeah, yeah, of course. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. Um, Well, I think that wraps it up. It does. uh, For Cool Boys. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, or you can join our Discord. Uh, We have that link down below, so you can join us, ask us questions. Uh, We will be posting some lists that Philip has that he uses at 1,000 points and 2,000 points. Make sure to join the Discord so you can access those uh, from the links below. Uh, Make sure to like, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube, and yeah, just come and hang out with us. We just want to talk about Warhammer, talk about games, talk about tabletop um, tabletop stuff in general so please keep adding comments about what uh, you'd like to see uh, more of we're trying to do as many armies as we can especially ones that we know Um, so if we don't get your army i apologize we apologize we're trying Um, to find people that play them (laughs) we don't play them all we're trying to get them all out there so (laughs) um, that's it anything else you want to say phil no just thanks for watching appreciate you guys hanging out with us yep